So this is the debut from writer-director Corey Finley, and I've been hearing a lot of remember his name. And I do agree because something about this movie is absolutely hypnotic. And it takes place in the wealthy suburbs of Connecticut, and it follows the disturbed codependent friendship between Anya Taylor-Joy's Lily, who is paid by the mother of Amanda, played by Olivia Cook, to hang out with her. And it's partially because Amanda has a little bit of a reputation after brutally euthanizing her own horse. It's this kind of film. <laughs> and their relationship complicates a little bit more when Amanda proposes that they maybe kill Lily's stepfather. And we have a clip of that. You ever think about just killing him? I mean, no. Could at least consider it. No. Just weigh the pros and cons. No. Why don't you consider all options? Yeah, not like murder. Yeah, sure, it's outside the box, but you can only get so far thinking how everyone else thinks. Look at Steve Jobs. What? I'm just going off what you're giving me. It's a cost-benefit analysis. Seems like you could generate a lot of benefit for a lot of people. Except I'd spend the rest of my life in jail. Why are you assuming you get caught? Oh. I love Amanda Cook's delivery in this. Oh, sorry, Olivia Cook's delivery in this film. It's just the complete flatness of it is terrifying. And <laughs> as you can tell from that clip, it's very much about the contrast between these two souls. You have Lily Anya, Taylor Joy's character, who is on the surface, she's trying to be calm and mature and grown up, but underneath she is a complete emotional mess versus this Amanda character who confesses very early on that she just feels no emotions and she spent her entire life trying to imitate what she sees other people doing. And she does mention that the doctors have diagnosed her with a varying degrees of mental illnesses and they keep changing her medications. I am not going to try and diagnose her because I'm not a doctor, but I would say <laughs> that it falls under the broad umbrella of psychopathy, I guess, especially in cinematic terms. I think all the posters have been saying, like, the new American psycho. So it's vaguely in that terms. And I, I wanted to bring that up because I think there's always been a long tradition of teenage psychopaths in cinema from Heathers, which is one of my favorite films of all time, and also Swim Fan, which they do directly reference in this film. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. They're very clear about what they want this film to be. And I think my sort of fascination with it is what it represents because it's almost this very weird upside down way of exploring the teenage experience at large. Mm -hmm. Because when you're a teenager, that's a time so associated with an overabundance of emotions. And so to look at the teenage psychopath, the thing that is completely the opposite, there's almost a perverse fascination because it's, it's almost the one thing you want when you're a teenager is just to feel a bit less emotion and to see the absolute extreme of that. It, it makes for a very strange experience for a film, I think. And it's also directly explored in the character that Anton Yelkin plays, um, which I should mention, this is his last performance that we're going to see in UK cinemas. He passed away in 2016. He did have a few unreleased projects. This is the last one coming out. Um, oh, but yeah, I just thought he was the most incredible talent and especially just the range of his performances yeah. to go from like crazy to Star Trek to this, where he's playing an absolute low life criminal. It's just this guy who is kind of pathetic. He's selling drugs to kids because he's too scared to deal with adults. <laughs> and um, but he has this mantra that he keeps repeating that. You see me in five to ten years, I'm going to be successful, I'm going to have the big house, I'm going to have the cars. And you just know in your heart that it will be forever unfulfilled because he's too controlled by his emotions. And that's almost a very dark way of examining how in society we've built up this ugly thing where almost emotions are a block to success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you think about, about it... Um, it's in, you know, even in our scientific level, they've discussed like one in five CEOs is probably a psychopath, which is just going to throw that statistic out there. But <laughs> it's always that association of like no emotions, more successful. And this is such an unsettling way to explore it, especially with Corey Finley's approach. 
even the film itself is slightly psychopathic. It's mm. very eerie. It's very calm. All of the violence is seen off screen. So, yeah, I think hypnotic is probably the best word for it. Is he, he's written it and directed it then? Yes. Oh, wow. It's impressive. Yeah, really. So, yeah, remember what? his name. <laughs> Just tell us one more time. Corey? Corey Finley. There we go, Corey Finley.